Good morning, students. Welcome back to physics class. Unit six, gravitation. The last video, you have learned apparent weight in elevators, right? Apparent weight in elevators. In that, four special cases you have discussed, isn't it? This case one, when the elevator is at rest. When the elevator is at rest, the apparent weight is equal to the actual weight. Also, when the elevator is uniformly moving upwards or downwards, when the elevator is moving uniformly, uniformly in the upward or downward direction, the same, the actual weight and the apparent weights are equal. Right? And when the elevator is accelerated upwards, when the elevator is accelerated upwards, the apparent weight of the man is greater than his actual weight. That is n is equal to m into g plus a. The apparent weight is greater than its actual weight. And the last one, when the elevator is accelerated downwards, the apparent weight is lesser than the actual weight. That is n equal to m into g minus a. Isn't it? So these are the special cases we have discussed in the last video. Today we are going to learn about weightlessness of freely falling bodies. Weightlessness of freely falling bodies. Before going to the topic, we have to understand about the concept of weight and mass. Weight and mass. What is mass? That is the quantity of matter contained in a body. Am I right? Quantity of matter contained in a body. What is weight? Suppose a mass which is placed on the earth. A mass which is placed on the earth which is attracted by this earth. Am I right? So that is nothing but a force is acting on this mass. That force is known as weight. So what is weight? Gravitational force acting on the mass is weight. Gravitational force acting on the mass is weight. I hope you have understood. That is mass means the quantity of matter. Weight means the force. Gravitational force acting on the mass. Right. When the body is at rest, we know that there are two forces acting on this body. That is one is gravitational force. Gravitational force is acting downward. Another one normal force which is acting upward. Gravitational force is acting downward and the normal force is acting upward. Isn't it? Here we are going to see weightlessness of freely falling bodies. A body which is falling freely. A body which is falling freely. What are the forces acting on this body? Tell me. When the body falling freely, it experiences only the gravitational force. Okay. Freely falling body experiences only the gravitational force. There is no normal force. Why? Because it is not in contact with any surface. It is not in contact with any surface. So, it doesn't experience any normal force. But, some air frictional force will be acting on this body. Okay? Air frictional force will be acting on this body. But, we are neglecting that force. And we can say the freely falling body experiences only the gravitational force. The normal force acting on the body is zero. Normal force acting on the freely falling body is zero. Okay. When the body moving downwards, how can we calculate the net force? That is... According to Newton's second law, F net force is equal to mass into acceleration. 
am i right so when the body is moving downwards we can write the net force is nothing but the gravitational force and the normal force so gravitational force m f g and the normal force both are acting uh, opposite direction so i can write f g minus n is equal to m into a so what is f g nothing but m into g m g minus n is equal to m into a so what is n n is equal to m g minus m a n is equal to m g minus m a so m into g minus a so then n is equal to m into g minus a this is the uh, weight that is in the body moving downwards or when the elevator is accepting downwards we got an apparent weight is lesser than its actual weight isn't it so here the freely falling body the freely falling body means the downward acceleration is equal to the acceleration due to gravity when the body falls freely the downward acceleration is equal to the acceleration due to gravity of the earth a equal to g right when the body falls freely the acceleration downward acceleration is equal to acceleration due to gravity so if you substitute here we will get n is equal to m into g minus g g minus g is equal to 0 so n is equal to 0 this is called weightlessness okay state of weightlessness so when the body falls freely the acceleration is equal to the acceleration due to gravity so the weight is equal to zero this is known as a state of weightlessness so we can explain the case of lift look at this figure in your book when the lift falls that is when the lift wire cuts lift falls what will happen the downward acceleration the lift is falling so downward acceleration is equal to g so the person inside the elevator is in the state of weightlessness or a free fall understand With the wire cuts it falls downwards downwards in the sense that is equal to the acceleration due to gravity so a equal to g so what will happen this person is not in the stable state person inside the lift is in the flying state actually that means it is in the state of weightlessness inside this lift actually this clock not not this clock this is the weighing machine it reads the zero zero means weightlessness understand but here in this picture and all the lift moving downwards the weight is when the measured weight is measured by this weighing machine it is actually lesser than his actual weight the first case this is the actual weight when the lift is move lift is at rest this is the actual weight when the lift is moving upwards the weight is little gained so this needle is little go higher when the lift is moving downwards this apparent weight is actually lesser than this actual weight so this needle shows the shows lesser weight when the lift falls freely if the wire cuts the needle shows zero weight that means he is in the flying state he is not touching this weighing machine he is in the flying state that means he feels the weightlessness because of a equal to g i hope you have understood this weightlessness of freely falling bodies the next one weightlessness in satellites you may have watched plenty of videos the persons in spaceships isn't it how what is the state of those persons in the spaceships they cannot able to sit they cannot able to stand they are in the flying state isn't it you may have enjoyed that videos plenty of videos are there spaceships the persons how they are eating 
how they are uh, working in that spaceships they all are in the flying state why they are in the flying state that is because of the weightlessness weightlessness so what is the reason so immediately we will say the astronauts will feels no gravitational force am i right why they are in the state of weightlessness in satellite because they don't ex experience any gravitational force actually this is the wrong understanding what happens So consider this is earth and satellites orbits this earth. So this is the satellite. Okay. So here satellites that orbit very close to this earth. It experiences only the gravitational force. Gravitational force that is. It is attracted by this earth. The gravitational force is acting this direction. Okay. So it experiences only the gravitational force. The astronauts inside this satellite also experiences the same gravitational force. Astronauts also experiences the same gravitational force. Same gravitational force force okay so they cannot exert any force on the floor of the satellite astronauts also experiencing the same gravitational force that is attracting towards the earth so they cannot experience any force by the floor on the satellite the floor of the satellite also cannot exert any normal force on the astronaut understand Astronauts does not experience any force on the floor of the satellite. Also, the floor does not exert any normal force on the astronauts. So, the astronauts inside the satellites are in the state of weightlessness. Okay. Not only the astronauts, all the objects, all the objects are in the state of weightlessness. Can you able to understand? So, weightlessness in satellite, this is because of the same gravitational force experienced by the astronauts in the satellite. As satellites experience the gravitational force. Look at this figure. You all know this is Stephen Hawking. That is actually he is in the state of weightlessness. In 2007, the scientists, they have uh, designed the space room. They, evacua they ev evacuated the earth and this scientist has experiences in the state of, he is in the flying state. He experienced the state of weightlessness. Okay, watch this video in the YouTube. Let's move on to the next topic, elementary ideas of astronomy. This is the last chapter in this unit. So astronomy you have heard this word. It is actually the study of universe and of objects that exist naturally in space such as moon, the sun and stars. Study of heavenly bodies. This astronomy was an important branch in physics. This is actually very closely related to the physical science. It contributed a lot to the physical science that is in the beginning of this chapter we have learned about the Kepler's laws Newton's laws Galileo's idea Ptolemy's idea etc etc all these laws and ideas were formulated based on the astronomical observations these astronomical observations are done by the scientists like Hippocrates, Ptolemy, Copernicus, Tycho Brahe, etc. etc. Okay. So in the olden days with the naked eye and some telescope, they have noticed the datas 
like distance, motion of stars, planets, etc. So without Tycho Brahe's astronomical idea or astronomical observation, Kepler's laws would not have emerged. Without Kepler's law, Newton's law would not be there. Okay. So the astronomy and the astronomical observations are very, very, very important to the physical science. You have heard two models that is heliocentric model and geocentric model. Geocentric model and heliocentric model. Geocentric model was proposed by Ptolemy. What is geocentric model? That is Earth is at the center, the other planets, even sun also revolving around the earth. That is geocentric model. Next heliocentric model, it was proposed by Nicholas Copernicus. According to this model, sun is at the center. All the other planets are revolving around the sun, including earth. Isn't it? So here it is important to analyze the shortcomings of geocentric model. The shortcomings of geocentric model over heliocentric model. That is heliocentric system over geocentric system. Actually, in the olden days, the astronauts were observed the motion of the planets in the night sky or their naked eyes or their some telescopes. So, they are observing the motion of the planets over a period of months and they are giving the data. Okay, so in that, they are explaining about the important concept retrograde motion of planets. Retrograde motion of planets. What is retrograde motion of planets? When they are analyzing the motion of the planets, the planets move eastwards and reverse their motion for a while and return to eastwards motion again. Planets move eastwards and reverse their motion for a while and return to eastwards motion again. This is called retrograde motion of planets. Look at this figure. This is retrograde motion of Mars over a year. Retrograde motion of Mars over a year. The scientists were done the observations for a year about the motion of the Mars planet. So this Mars moves initially Eastwards, this is west, this is east. Over a year from February month to December, they have analyzed the motion of the mass, planet mass. Okay, so initially from February, from February, March, April, May, June. From February to June, it moves eastwards. Then July, August, September. July, August, September, what happens? Its path moves backward. It reverses its path and moves backward. Then, October, November, December. In these months, it continues its forward motion. Understand? So, the mass moving eastwards from February to June, then July, August, September, it reverses its path and moves backward. Then it changes its direction, that is October, November, December, it continues its forward motion. So this is the retrograde motion. So astronomers recorded the retrograde motion of all the planets. And they are trying to explain the motion. Retrograde motion. Actually, this retrograde motion are explained on the basis of geocentric theory. That is, Earth is considered at the center. Okay. So, here, Aristotle has explained that the planets revolving 
around the earth the planets and the sun revolving around the earth in a circular orbits okay so if it is a circular orbit then how can we explain the reverse motion of the planet for a short interval okay there is a question if it is a circular orbit how can we explain the reverse motion of the planet for this explanation that is for the explanation of retrograde motion ptolemy introduced another one concept called epicycle in his geocentric model so ptolemy introduced the epicycle in his geocentric model okay so what is epicycle according to this concept while the planet orbited the earth it is also underwent another circular motion termed as epicycle while the planet orbited the earth it also underwent another circular motion termed as epicycle that is the combination of epicycle and the circular motion epicycle and the circular motion rise to the retrograde motion of the planets with respect to the earth okay so this is the model of epicycle epicycle motion of planetary objects around the earth with respect to the months of observation that is this is earth and the planets are revolving around the earth so here this is the planet okay so this planet when it is revolving around the earth over a period of months it underwent epicycle motion so it moves here and it reverses its path okay that means it underwent another one circular motion orbits inside the orbits orbits inside the orbit that is epicycle so this is the center of the epicycle look at this figure you can understand again clearly so earth this is the motion of the uh, planet so when the planet moves around the circular orbit it underwent another one epicycle motion so this is the center and again it moves in the circular motion then little bit it turns uh, it reverses its path and it uh, undergoes another forward motion so there is a orbit orbit inside another one orbit okay so this is the epicycle motion of planetary objects so ptolemy retained his geocentric idea with the explanation of epicycle motion but it is very complex for every planet undergoing the retrograde motion it does not clearly explain for all the planets the retrograde motion so geocentric model were discovered and in the 15th century copernicus 15th century polish astronomer copernicus he proposed the heliocentric model heliocentric model for the problem of epicycle actually in the heliocentric model the sun is at the center of the solar system and all the planets orbit at the sun so according to this concept he is explaining the retrograde motion that is the retrograde motion of planets with respect to earth is because of relative motion okay the retrograde motion of planets with respect to earth is because of the relative motion of the planet relative motion of the planet with respect to earth with respect to earth the retrograde motion of the planet with respect to earth is because of the relative motion of the planet with respect to earth this figure shows the retrograde motion in heliocentric model okay so here this is sun earth revolving around the sun in an orbit also one of the planet mars revolving around the sun in an orbit okay here the earth orbits around the sun faster than mars okay and the relative motion of the mars and the earth we are analyzing actually this is earth motion 
this is the mass motion and the motion of the mass with respect to earth is analyzed by means of an naked eye or a telescope the astronomers observed a retrograde motion because of the relative motion with respect to earth and mass okay because of the relative motion between mass and earth mass mass appears to move backwards okay so a this is position b that is the period of months february march april likewise c and then after this month d e f that is july to october july to october this planet mars move backwards and then it continues the forward motion that is from east towards planets is move planets are moving east towards okay so because of the relative motion between the mars and earth mars appears to move backwards from july to october so this same way with respect to the motion of earth and the planet they can explain all the other planets successfully the retrograde motion of all the other planets successfully okay so the heliocentric model slowly replaced the geocentric model one accept the heliocentric model okay so all the detailed discussions will be found in the astronomy books friends today we have discussed about weightlessness of freely falling bodies weightlessness in satellites and elementary ideas of astronomy in that heliocentric model system heliocentric system over geocentric system we have discussed weightlessness of freely falling bodies very 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 important three mark question don't skip any points from this from here to here you have to write okay so weightlessness of freely falling body very important short answer also you have to learn how the heliocentric theory is replaced by geo sorry how the geocentric theory is replaced by heliocentric theory by the explanation of retrograde motion okay from here to the last page till this okay study these two questions thank you students